not often thought of as a type of genre that would go hand in hand together. There are times when nothing could be more terrifying than a vehicle driven by itself or by that of a murderous antagonist or someone looking for payback in a horror action film in order to seek revenge or to go on a motor vehicle rampage. MFP presents 10 horror vehicles that gave us chills on screen. A 1976 possessed car film that predates some of the other better known ones on this list, Crash is part of the low budget genre of car films of the 70s that got forgotten over the years. The story as follows takes place when a murder attempt by an invalid husband on his young wife's life fails and she is found to have amnesia while she recovers from a motor vehicle accident. She is able via the help of a voodoo statue she obtains under David Crash to possess inanimate objects via telepathy and dark magic, having a psychic link with the very car she crashed in as it sets out on revenge and a random unintentional killing spree as the car tries to return to her. Opting for a black 1967 Chevy Camaro convertible, which is thought may have actually started off as a hardtop, the Camaro is convincingly displayed in its driverless form given its open top appearance. Since information is scarce on this low-budget film, it is not fully determined what engine type powered the possessed Camaro or how many were used during production. Directed by B-movie horror producer Charles Band in only his second feature film, who would go on to direct Traces and produce the horror cult puppet master series, Crash, although quite thin on plot, actually has a number of impressive car stunts for the time and its budget. Though an easily forgotten film, Crash is at least quite unique and even ahead of its time due to its subject matter of motor vehicle possession that would be better executed in the years that followed. Admittedly under heavy influence of Kyokane and Booze, Stephen King's one and only directed feature film Maximum Overdrive tells the story of a mysterious cosmic event that leads to the rise of machines that go on a homicidal killing spree against humankind. The film focuses on a group of survivors stranded at a truck stop as they are surrounded by a number of trucks in an almost zombie-like manner. The standout and often poster feature vehicle is a black western star 4800 semi-truck toy transporter with the now iconic giant Spider-Man villain Green Goblin head mounted on its front, giving it a chilly presence and a standout among the other rigs, making it the center of attention in this Rise of Machines horror flick. Accompanied with music by the great Aussie rock band ACDC and their hit song Who Made Who, this oddity is now a horror fan treat and its absurdity and comical at times execution make for a fun entertainment as the machines that take over commit some of the most ridiculous, be it imaginative kills on screen. There is debate as to what make and model the rig actually is, yet most conclude that it is a Western Star 4800 and it is only seen on screen actually committing a small amount of the carnage, yet its popularity still remains as it is seen as the film star possessed rig being Stephen King's only directed feature film that has since gone on to be a cult classic and despite the writer himself admittingly having no strong memory of the events due to substance of use at the time, we are lucky to have a film at all and discuss over 30 years later that is a gem of sheer insanity. If one was to ever wonder what type of car Jason from the Friday the 13th franchise would drive, the image of the Lord Humongous custom truck from Mad Max 2 would be pretty close indeed. Sporting the hockey mask before the supernatural killer, Humongous from the 1981 Australian action classic had one of the meanest looking vehicles on the road. A 6x4 custom made for the film truck, based on an F-series chassis, the vehicle was powered by the more than common to Australia Ford 351 V8 Cleveland engine and was decked with two leaving hood ornaments for good measure. It was given almost the bare minimum of a shell with no roof and it was a one-seater nitrous assisted murder machine that had room at the front to carry two more passengers as it raced across the wasteland of the Australian outback. Its most notable achievement was in assisting with the destruction of Max's V8 Pursuit Special Interceptor. Like a number of horror machines, this one was no exception as it would meet its end in a spectacular head-on collision leaving behind nothing more but twisted metal and shredded flesh. He couldn't make it. Although not the scariest on this list, the evil twin of Kit from the original Knight Rider series car, Knight Automated Roving Robot, was the prototype of the most advanced self-aware car ever to be built by the foundation of law and government. First appearing in the ninth episode of season one, Car, originally voiced by Optimus Prime's Peter Cullen, was programmed for self-preservation and proved to be the antithesis of his twin brother Kit, as he would do whatever it took to keep himself on the road and avoid deactivation. 
with the series producers opting for a 1982 Trans Am with a 145 horsepower LG4 5 liter V8 engine, among others fitted for different needs in the show. Kit and car were made to appear futuristic and sleek in their black as night appearance. Only appearing slightly different to Kit via a green voice modulator when first appearing, it would not be until his return in the Season 3 episode Kit vs Car where he took on a more distinct appearance with a now amber scanner and black and silver paint trim and was now voiced by Disney favourite Paul Frees who reused his voice style from the Disney Park attraction The Haunted Mansion. Last chance, Aladdin. It was Season 3 we saw Car at his most evil in both causing the damage of a pacemaker and the blackmail suffocation and heat blasting of a young woman in order to get the assistance he needed to obtain that which he wanted his revenge on Michael Knight and his brother Kit. With a name like the Tall Man and a rep for being a grave robbing mortician from another dimension, it would be almost hard to imagine any other type of vehicle of choice to be driven by this lesser appreciated icon of horror other than a Cadillac funeral coach. Though changing model to model with each installment of the franchise, it is the 1969 Black Hearse from the second film of this horror series that stands out the most due to a memorable chase and its use in this film's shocking ending. Criminally too short of a chase scene, the hearse will be used more in this film than the previous installment, almost making it a character of its own this time. One of the more larger engines of this list, the 1969 Cadillac was powered by a 472 7.7 litre V8 engine with a 375 horsepower output making it a powerhouse and more than suited engine for the horror movie villain known as the Tall Man. The other car in this franchise that needs to be given a spot on this list is the 1971 jet black Plymouth Cooter driven by the film's protagonists. A favourite among car fans and muscle car collectors, the wrongfully labelled Hemi Cooter in this film is brought back from the first one, though it is a replacement for the original that was lost after the film's production ended. It was at the request of writer-director Don Coscarelli, who had fallen in love with the car ever since he saw someone he knew in high school with the Cuda, that he wanted the heroes of his horror franchise to be seen driving around in one. An inspiration for Baby in the likes of the hit TV series Supernatural, where the heroes of that show drove around in their own black muscle car while in pursuit of evil. The heroes of this film drive the Cuda around going from state to state in this badass machine in search of the tall man and the death he brings with him. A staple of the horror series since the first installment, the 1970 and 71 Plymouth Cooter is only a genuine Hemi in the third film, while the first two films use the 1971 model carrying a 440 six-pack badge and the second a Hemi Cooter badge. These labels were fictitious as neither of those were accurate to the car as it actually carried a 340 V8 engine with 290 horsepower. It was in Phantasm 2 that would be the better showcase of the Cooter and have a brief encounter with the tall man and his hearse where it would meet its demise in spectacular fashion. It's a dream. It's only a dream. No, it's not. Yet another supernatural vehicle, the Turbo Interceptor from the 1986 movie The Wraith, ranks lower on this list than would be expected, mostly due to its lack of fear inducing terror as it is more of a tool for revenge and less of a horror machine. Yet its mysterious and intimidating dark appeal makes it hard to ignore. Its sheer presence and its overall ability to kill its victims and re-emerge undamaged and vanish into thin air make it a spooky inclusion on any car list. Said to be another dimensional reincarnation of a murdered teen, the Wraith tells the story of a spirit coming back from the dead to seek revenge on those who murdered him. He is given a supernatural fast car that he uses to race his killers and beat them at their own game by killing them one at a time by causing them to crash into his car that is able to reconfigure itself each time in a ghost-like manner. Revealed to have an almost organic heartbeat-like engine, the Wraith Interceptor was in fact an M4S PPG pace car made by Dodge Chrysler as a four-cylinder 2.2 litre DOHC 440 horsepower engine based prototype able to reach almost 200 miles per hour. Since there was only one complete car available for the film, several replicas were made while the original was only used for close-ups. Some replicas were hollowed out shells that were used for the collision scenes. Part of the cheesy fun action thriller films of the 80s, with rock music and dated fashion, the Wraith is still an enjoyable crash fest and still brings entertainment with its fast car chases and exciting stunts. Duel is a film about an everyday man who is stalked by what appears to be an almost driverless big rig that has put him randomly in its sights to toy with and eventually kill. Being Steven Spielberg's first feature length film that was made for television, Duel is now seen as an amazing first big step for the director into terror 
that he would gain fame with a few years later with his blockbuster masterpiece, Jaws. Featuring a grimy beat up rig, the truck and Jewel was said to either be a 1955 to 1960 Peterbilt 281 rig with a tag axle, which has led people to argue if it was actually a 351 due to its double axle, as the 281 initially had a single axle. What further led to the debate was that due to its original made-for-TV shorter runtime of 74 minutes, another truck was brought in to extend the runtime to add scenes in order to give the film a theatrical running time of 90 minutes. A 1964 Peterbilt 351 was used to extend several scenes and has fed into the confusion of the truck's identity. In order to allow the Peterbilt to reach 90 miles per hour, modifications were needed to its CAT 1674 twin turbocharged engine in order to keep up with the car that was targeted and driven by our protagonist, which was a 1971 Plymouth Valiant Deluxe. Never fully revealing the rig's driver, Jewel is neither supernatural nor futuristic. Its strengths and its terror comes from its basis in reality, as we see a situation unfold into a living nightmare that could happen to almost anyone. Perhaps one of the more simplistic and direct movie titles about a killer car in a horror movie, this 1977 film simply titled The Car has been seen as a precursor to our number one pick on this list. Playing on the success of Steven Spielberg's Jaws, The Car follows the same premise but is set on four wheels and on land as a custom 1971 black Lincoln Continental Mark III coupe with a 460 Ford V8 engine terrorizes a small desert town while it is left up to a local law enforcement officer to save it from this menace. Three cars were originally purchased and built for the production, having each one crafted and modified out of metal as no fiberglass was used as would have been the case with today's movie car modifications. Being a movie over 40 years old, a lot of the effects were done practically and in camera. One such effect and stunt that was overly ambitious according to director Elliot Silverstein in an interview was a scene that required the Lincoln to turn and flip and launch itself onto two oncoming police cars. Done with explosive charges, the stunt had gone wrong during preparation while the director was standing close to the vehicle and just narrowly missed flipping on top of him. The film itself was lacklustre and came out in a year where two box office franchises were released and was initially forgotten as it lacked any real interest from the audience at the time. But like a number of films of its kind, it has gone on to be seen as a movie so bad it's good due to its dark demonic storyline and cheesy acting. How do you kill something? that can't possibly be alive. Christine. What else could the number one spot have gone to? Another Stephen King adaptation, only this time under the direction of horror movie legend John Carpenter, this 1983 horror classic is one that has been highly praised over the years by fans and critics alike, as it tells the obsessive love tale of a young high school teenager and his first car, a 1958 Plymouth Belvedere Fury in a cherry red and white trim. Already standing apart, the original production run of the 1958 Fury had only ever come out in one color option, that was buckskin beige with gold trim. Originally written by King in the novel as a four-door Plymouth Fury, it was never actually available in this option, and over 20 cars were obtained for the film, though the exact number is often questioned in order to make the story and self-repairing possessed car come to life. A vast number of those cars were destroyed during production, as this is one of the few movie and TV cars to have the unique ability to fully repair itself from being almost totally demolished, and was done in practical effects manner with no CGI or model usage. Powered by a Chrysler 5.2 litre V8, the sound used for the car in the film as it terrorised anyone who would stand in its way was that of a 1970 Ford Mustang 428 Super Cobra jet engine. Part of the fear was in the car's ability to communicate to its victims via 50s rock music blaring through its radio moments before it would run them down or crush them. Christine would make a few comebacks in later years, in both the opening of another Stephen King adapted film Cat's Eye and in the 2017 John Carpenter Christine music video. Christine however had only one true feature film outing, yet over the years has gone on to be an almost if not iconic 80s horror film villain and is a horror and car fan favourite. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button in order to help this channel grow and to bring you more content like this one as your support is what keeps this channel going.